Hello, welcome to a new tutorial uh, about a relatively new feature uh, of the toolkit, which is outlines, uh, where you can display the movement or the range or whatever of units um, as a spline outline, uh, like this path here, uh, which is a bunch of spline meshes instead of using individual static meshes um, or using decals, etc. So if you want that kind of look, uh, then you can utilize this feature. Uh, I've chosen to display this in the jungle raid map uh, since we can here see quite a few features and also uh, because it is a map that I designed before I created the outline system uh, so it is also a good place to uh, to show uh, in what ways you might have to design uh, your levels a bit differently or like the placement of your meshes a bit differently uh, to make it look uh, the best possible with outline. So you can see here as an example you have this thin wall here right and then the outline is drawing it you know uh, around the or like between the tiles uh, so if you are making a map you probably don't want to have this sort of uh, wall at an angle um, if it is, you know, a thin wall with tiles on both both sides, things like that to kind of keep in mind when you're designing your levels to make it look as good as possible. Also here, I believe, if we're zooming out, you can see, you know, how that's just how Unreal Engine terrain works, right? It, de it deforms a bit when you zoom in and out, so then the spline goes under it, um, things like that. So uh, compared to using like decals, you will probably have to be a bit more mindful about how you design your levels. Um, but since I designed this level before that and it works pretty well, uh, it still shouldn't take that much adjustment. Um, you can also see uh, that these um, outlines work with when there's just, yeah, like I said here, when there's like a thin wall between tiles. So it doesn't have to be like a full uh, tile between um, walkable sides for the outline to be drawn. Uh, you also notice some um, special features of this particular outline setup where we have the uh, we have a different color for short move and long move and when we are hovering over the long move uh, then the short move becomes this dashed line this is uh, the same way as it works in XCOM which is what I've modeled that after uh, so this is one of the more advanced outline setups uh, so we're not going to start with this map, I'm going to, or maybe we can start with the map, but I'm not going to start with this ability, we're going to come back to it. And we'll start with something a bit simpler to show how you can set up uh, your own outlines. So yeah, as mentioned, we are in the jungle raid map. Uh, so I just removed all the units and just placed one of the player units here, uh, since that was a good place to display, display the outlines. Uh, we will change the ability this guy is using to a simpler movement uh, to start now. Uh, so I'll go to the ability system and we're changing sprint to just the regular move ability instead. Uh, and we can see that it works immediately with an outline. This is like dashed all the time. And this is because we are using the tactics grid UI, uh, which is the one that we were using for the previous ability. Uh, so how you change uh, this outline uh, is by changing the grid UI. So that's how you change any sort of um, like display for your abilities in ATVTT. I've covered that before, uh, though the name of the video might not be that obvious. So if you haven't seen that, then see um, the w one where I go over new features in uh, version 3.0. There I cover how to work with grid UI, but I'll also give a refresher here. Uh, and here are some warnings. Yeah, that's because we're using the tactics outline for this other ability. And the tactics outline is a bit special as it's set up uh, so that it's looking for when we are hovering at far and near distances. And we don't have that for that ability. So we don't want to use that grid UI for that, to be sure. Um, so let's also uh, choose a simpler grid UI for this ability. So how, how do you select a grid UI? Uh, to remind you all, then you have to find your grid manager. Um, and then find the grid UI within the grid manager. Uh, so you, we see here that it's set to decals, outline, and it's a bit hard to see here, uh, but it's set to tactics. Uh, so if we instead just set it to the default outline uh, grid UI, then we have this more basic outline setup and we should get no errors. Um, here we can also choose things like setting it to you know the decals one, 
uh, and now we will display as decals instead etc. Uh, so what you choose in the grid manager that is what you'll be using as the default grid UI and then you can override it within specific abilities. So now we were using the uh, default movability uh, so we can go in here and we can find the grid UI uh, which the override which is there. This might be a good point to mention a, a common question on the, the Discord which is that people are not able to find variables that are tied to the parent because grid UI override that's not in a, uh, a variable that is specific to this blueprint it is actually in the parent blueprint BP ability and by default uh, Unreal Engine tends to have this unchecked so you would not be able to see this variable so make check, uh, sure to check show inherited variables then you'll find the override here and then we can choose something else. So we can set it back to outline or let's set it to the cartoon outline, which is a different look. So now we have this nice, nice uh, cartoonish outline, uh, which uh, works with this ability instead. So this is how you can quickly change uh, to a grid UI with outlines that you've already set up and you can choose that for your abilities and for the defaults etc. Uh, but how do we create a new outline? Let's look at that. So currently you will find the outlines in maps and uh, demo uh, and outline might not be the best place for it actually so if it has changed in a future update just just go to content and search for, for DT outlines uh, and you'll find it. Uh, but currently that's where you'll uh, where it is uh, and so it's a data table where you can modify and create new outlines so let's create one we, we let's base it on the cartoon one we, we just saw it's easier to instead of creating a whole new row to choose the outline that most looks like what you want and then you know duplicating it uh, so let's call this then uh, tutorial um, and we'll keep the material for this um, we can take a look at that material quickly, by the way. So here you see we have a few different kinds of materials. And if you're creating your own materials, uh, then look into those and see how you need to set up the parameters uh, in order to make them work as new outlines. If you want to be able to override the color, for instance, or when it, how it tiles, how quickly it goes, etc. Uh, then you will need to set that up in the material. Um, but we'll use this one for now. We can change the color. Let's set it like to red, and we can make it you know smaller or larger. Currently, it's set to be twice as large as the spline mesh that we are using. And so I'll set it to be just 100% of the regular size. Then we can get it to tile a bit uh, slower. Let's say so now it goes at high at half speed. And then we can also choose a different uh, blueprint class for our splines. Uh, so uh, this is the blueprint that actually creates the spline meshes and draws the spline. So if you really want a lot of control, I've created it to be modular so you can create your own kind of spline path classes if, if you're into that. Um, and uh, offsets here, we can change things like how far away from the center of the tile is uh, the outline drawn. So straight is like in a straight direction. Uh, it uh, so the outline will be 80 units unreal units away from the center uh, of tiles and then you can change you know the the curve of the uh, of the corners and and things like that uh, if you want to modify how the outline looks in very fine detail i won't be doing that here and if you change the values to be a lot then it can start looking <laughs> to look weird so so you should stay fairly close to this probably but but feel free to experiment and then tiling length is like how many unreal units um will it take uh, along the uh, the spine meshes before we tile um to um another um, instance of the material so we can or how yeah how ma many times are material tiles so if it's 50 then every 50 unreal engines our material will tile again so if i set this to something higher let's say 200 uh, then it will be stretched out a lot more so if we use this we have to set this up now first uh, before we can see it so let's let's do that before we look at it and um, so we are using for our grid UI, we are using the cartoon uh, grid UI. 
So we can look this up and open it. And where you override this stuff is within the path visuals here. So here you have different gameplay tags that are associated with different kinds of paths and outlines. And for ability move, um, I know that we are using the uh, this move tag to indicate that this is the outline we want to be using uh, to show uh, tiles in move range. So this is what we want to change here. So if I change this to tutorial and hit play, then you see that we now have this, which is, you know, it's tiling much larger. So these segments are a lot longer and it's going slower. Um, and also the outline is thinner. Um, now, since I just mentioned that, the place where the abilities tell our grid UI what path to use, uh, you can see examples of this. So within our move ability, when we are activating this ability and we are uh, spawning tile markers, uh, then we are specifying we're using the move marker type. So if I change this to, let's say, special, uh, then it will be using whatever our grid UI is defining here in special, which is tactics far, which would be this yellowish outline. Yeah, so now we change that. So now we're using that outline instead. I'll change that back to move. Um, so you have that for outlines, but you also have the same thing for paths and paths as you know, this path that is displayed from our, your unit to where you're going to move. It uses a very similar system or almost the same. It just uses a different uh, version of the blueprint for drawing the um, uh, this uh, this path here um, so and this can also be changed within the ability um, so for hover here we see that we are using the path type right and in our grid UI you can see at the path type it is this simple path but we can change it to let's see be the cartoon path and now our movement path will be this a cartoon path instead. And um, so this, of course, looks very similar to the cartoon outline we had earlier, uh, but it is in a separate table. Uh, so if we look at uh, our outline, so we have the spine paths here. So it's using the exact same structure as our outlines. Uh, so you can, if you want to, you can do both of them in one data table. It's just for organization. I put them in, in different ones. Do you see that the main difference here, if we, if we compare, you know, our uh, cartoon outline here with our cartoon path, you can see that they are uh, really identical, just that it, uh, it specifies that it's using a different class, which is the one that's used for drawing paths instead. If I were to change this to like the regular one that's used for drawing outlines, uh, then we'd get some weird effects, I think. Yeah, you see that it doesn't bend correctly and uh, a few things like that. So it's not set up to work correctly with spline paths. Uh, so we're using the spline path path for this. So yeah, the name is, <laughs> is pretty terrible there. Uh, so, but, but I mean, I am the guy who created the advanced turn-based tile toolkit. So naming is apparently not my strength. So <laughs> I just have to deal with that. That's I considered calling, you know, the base outline and then outline path and yeah, nothing sounded completely right. So that's what I, I ended up with for that. Uh, so yeah, so you can create then both these kinds of uh, outlines and paths using a similar system. Right. So having covered the basics, let's move back to our more advanced ability just to, to show some, some of the more fancy things you can potentially do. So let's uh, go back to our abilities um, for our unit here. Why isn't it working? Because I'm searching for stuff. Okay. Ability system and we're switching back to sprint. Uh, and then yeah, let's see how this works with the current setup. Yeah, because now we're using this this red outline that we had set up earlier, right? That, that's uh, that's what we chose in our grid UI here. Is that correct? Um, grid UI, oh, we're back to decals here. Uh, but we are overriding this in sprint, are we? Um, talking to myself now, but I hope you can follow. We have to find our sprint ability um, and find the grid UI here since we are overriding it. Um, so then we can just change it, you know, in the grid manager because we are overriding it within our ability and we can change this to something else. So let's go back to tactics, which is the one that's set up 
to work like like we saw at the start and i'll show how that works and uh, i'll show how something doesn't work maybe to make it clear so if we go then to our sprint ability we find our tactics outline here and then we can go and change these path visuals uh, and let's change again our path to be the cartoon path and we'll see that this will actually not work uh, we are still having the same path as we did before and that's because since i'm doing this thing here where, where i want the path to be one color if we are using one movement point like one action point and then different color when we're using two action points uh, i'm overriding what path visual is being used within the ability itself and let's see how i'm doing that if we go into the sprint ability yeah, here's the function for it actually but i'll show where it is done because this is all done within hover right because uh, this is where we are displaying displaying the path and we can find our client display path here and we see that it's still set to path but if you are specifying a path data then this will take priority over uh, what you have set here so here we can specify a complete path data which is a data table row which is pointing to uh, one of these spline paths here directly. So we can see that in sprint, uh, we are checking a hovered tile and then we check, okay, for this hovered tile, what is the movement cost of getting to that tile? And if it is larger than the move attribute value of our unit, uh, then we are choosing this far path. And if it's closed, then we're choosing the simple path. So we can could override this within this ability and say instead of doing the far path we're doing the cartoon path uh, did i change that correctly uh what happened um yeah okay so now if we hover far now we're getting the cartoon path and then we're going getting the short path so this is ways in which you can override this functionality so i think that should cover most of the important stuff uh, well, I should maybe mention that this isn't only for movement. You can use it for other stuff like the the bomb ability now uses this this red outline. So it uses can use the same system if you do that in the grid UI. Um, so uh, one thing that I should note uh, probably is that this uh, that drawing the outline is quite expensive compared to drawing decals or instant static meshes. That that I'm doing previously displaying them not that expensive uh, but but drawing them creating like all of these spline meshes etc is quite expensive in Unreal Engine so if you are uh, making you know a, a mobile game or something like that you might not want to use the outlines um, I use like every trick in the book to try to make it um, as cheap as possible I'm, I'm caching the uh, the spline mesh meshes for instance so that uh, it will be much cheaper to draw them the second time you're drawing compared to like the first time you draw an outline and also uh, this is one of those things that runs significantly faster in a packaged project compared to in engine it still uh, runs fairly well in engine but just keep in mind it is more expensive than these other ways of drawing them um, so i think that's all i have uh, if you have any all the questions about how to use outlines or, or anything else then uh, feel free to ask me on discord we have a great little community going there so so please join us or i mean you can ask questions here in the comments as well it's often just a bit easier on discord where i can post you know images and 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 code and things like that but if you have a quick question then of course ask in the comments here that that's fine too um, and uh, links to the discord and uh, you know the product and support thread and whatever that is in the description of this video and most of my videos uh, so i hope you can find answers to all the questions that you have and if not then you know feel free to ask okay see you in the next video